In July of 2017, 20th Century Fox commissioned a national survey regarding aliens and alien abductions. Of those surveyed, almost 40% believed ETs have visited Earth at some point. Furthermore, the survey reported that 18% of those surveyed believed that alien abductions are taking place. Many of those who report being taken aboard alien craft are lifelong experiencers. This relatively small percentage of people often recall their experiences beginning from when they are as young as five years old. Experiencers like Hillary Porter. Hillary claimed on national television in the UK that she has a long history of encountering mysterious beings and being taken aboard their craft. She even made a statement that she had physical proof that she had been subjected to invasive examinations by these extraterrestrials. This case file joined the theorists as they spill the beans on the top voted choice for the Ron Pond monthly fan pick poll, The Abductions of Hillary Porter. Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 190, Hillary Porter and the Council of Beans. I'm Brayden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. What, what was the title? <laughs> Hiller, Hillary Porter, Porter and the Council of Beans. <laughs> yeah, it's this we got the inside scoop from J.K. Rowling. This is the missing ninth book of the series. The ninth book. <laughs> it's ninth book, isn't it? Yeah, it's they've switched genders. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and last names. <laughs> uh, it's well, just, just you just and, have to say Hillary Porter. Hillary Porter. Hillary Porter. That's and, how I was saying it all day. And powers, not wizards anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, oh. it's not, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, before we get going here, we got to just quick something we don't usually do, but, uh, don't get your hopes up, don't get your hopes up, but, um, um, big birthday shout out to rich, uh, at, um, uh, bear country on our Instagram. He's been a long, long time fan of the show, long time friend of the show. Um, his, uh, special lady friend, Michelle, uh, messaged us and asked to make sure we gave, uh, Rich, uh, nice birthday shout out. So, hey, cheers to you, man. Yeah, happy, happy birthday, birthday. Buddy. Happy birthday. Cheers. Happy birthday. Every once in a while, we cheers if, to you. If people are persistent enough, it, it, uh, it she put it like because she knows we're dumb. So she's like, I'm going to remind these guys on the day just so they do it. Well, yeah, she did. That was smart. And the only reason we're doing this, like, it's a rare occurrence. And two people happen to have the same birthday and both. Rem- like remind me to ask. Uh, so the I don't know. <laughs> okay, hold on. Remind just, me. Okay, take to, a take a sip. Gurgle really quick. <laughs> swallow. Remind Let's say me that to, again. Remind me to uh, ask. Both these people reminded me to give the mentions. Okay. Um, the second one is for Vanessa. It's her twenty second birthday, and she's currently partying it up in Vegas. Lucky. And her special mm. uh, man friend Jonathan messaged us he 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 actually made me laugh and the only reason i gave this shout out is because he said hey i've never listened to this show i have no <laughs> idea what it's about <laughs> but my my girlfriend she's obsessed with it i i don't know what she it sounds like about. a cool lady man yeah you should yeah tie that up she's pretty cool and happy birthday vanessa you're so, 22nd so if you take anything from those birthday shout outs take it from zell and braden who's well, well we don't do this often we definitely don't do it often. so <laughs> so don't ask to do it <laughs> well yeah if you like honestly like if you we don't do it this, often then we did a double yeah if you heard this and you're like my birthday's coming up next week i want to shout out and you message i'm i'll probably ignore the message you gotta wait a little while <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be special. You gotta gotta be let special. it simmer down. You gotta, let, you gotta let it fall into it, like you fall gotta, behind in our memory. Well, here's the Bear Country. He's been uh, he's been a fan of the show for a long time on Instagram. Uh, I mistake mis- mistook him for Colberry one time. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, because they have similar names. Yeah. What the hell? I forget what Colberry's name is, but some bear, right? Something bear. Yeah. yeah. So I thought it was Bear Claw. He's, like, he's yeah. like, nah, nah, it's. 
It's not Colbert. <laughs> Whatever. Colbert gets a birthday shout out for yeah, sure. Col- I don't know Colberry, when it is, but happy birthday, birthday dude. You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love you. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> you got one minute. Um, get, get him in. <laughs> no, tonight we're... T- this is... Like, honestly, of all the case files we've ever done, I can't believe we've never heard of this one before because of... Well, one, all the, like, oodles and oodles of photographic, unequivocal... Photographic, <laughs> photographic evidence, photographic yeah, cool. as evidence of UFOs and aliens Two, just the most credible sources and like lots of them. It's unbelievable. She let, let's put it this way. She's definitely a superior source. hundred percent superior human being. Uh, yeah. And we are of course talking about Hillary Porter. Hillary Porter. Hillary Porter. <laughs> Porter. Um, Dan, where's what's, what's Hillary's deal. Hillary Porter. Uh, as of the writing of her book, uh, which is titled uh, The Diaries and Recollections of an Alien Aduc- Ad- Abductee, which includes illustrations. So, really, uh, really good sorry, on it. Sorry, sorry, no, no, no. It. Dan, you, I think you mean photos. You mean photos. It includes photos. Yeah. <laughs> photos. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. It doesn't say it. And, it says photos. And pencil photos. Diagra- diagrams. How about that? Diagrams. Oh, no. I mean, diagrams. Just Dan, just because they are made with Crayola doesn't mean they're any less credible, buddy. <laughs> uh, she's the vice chairman of Beams, which is the British <laughs> Earth and Aerial <laughs> Mystery Society. And the, the, Beams. the other, the, the chairman, Ken. Yeah. Ken right. is the chairman Ken. of Beans. Ken. Chairman he's Ken. A, yeah. He's the chairman of Beans. Mm. All right. Uh, and she is a, uh, or claims to be a lifelong alien and a T. Uh, and she also has a numerous experiences with other mysterious phenomenon. Um, and she also works as a volunteer abdu- alien abduction counselor. I'm also, I'm, I I'm think, not sure if that's a professional. I don't, I'm not sure you can be a professional alien abduction. Well, I'm, I'm, I feel I'm like a, we are. I'm a volunteer alien abduction. I guess we counselor. are all, yes, we are all volunteer alien. Actually, I'm not. Counselors. We're professional. Professional alien abductee counselors? Yeah. Oh, no, we're I mean, I don't personally, I don't have any fucking Crayola pictures to back up my credibility, but I don't know if I you don't have a, a certificate of, uh, oh. nope. <laughs> you don't have a certificate of a degree in alien abduction counseling. Unfortunately, I do not. I can, oh. I, I can make you a degree You make one real quick. I can whip one yeah, up. Like color Crayola box. I got, I think a 32 pack. Ooh. Is the one we come with a sharpener at the bottom? You're damn right. Oh, oh, man. Fuck. oh, damn. High class. What are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Hillary Porter is uh, or claims to be a person who has ex- experienced a number of mysterious alien phenomena throughout her life. Um, she claims that uh, there's at least in her photos on in her book, she has one photo from her day of her christening. And she thinks that at least from that day, that's the earliest time that she thinks that these extraterrestrials that's sometimes not exactly the same so it's not That's in all point. of her experiences there's not exactly consistency in all of the creatures or the um uh lit beans that she encounters i mean like um, she she has three different categories of aliens right right so she has a couple so she's been in contact with these beans for at least since the day of her christening she claims that in this photo um i don't know if we're going to show it yeah uh, i'll show it in a second here Okay, so uh, on, she has a photo that she claims that the day of her christening, there is to be seen a hooded figure behind her grandfather who is posing for a photo with her, her the rest of her family. There it is. Zell's pulling it up right there. So and um, if you go back to like, it's like 84, it's, they have a zoomed in one because it's hard to right. see on that one. So if you're watching the live stream, you can see what we're doing. If, you, if you're not, if you're just listening to the podcast, it's Beams investigations.org you can find her public pdf with all of her photos yeah right it's a That's pdf of her beans. illustration beans. book beans. that she has published beans beams beans what was it? uh one uh, up 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 right there that one so that's where so, you can see the so, operation in those two so here yeah this was oh, a, a okay black- you mean to tell me that that weird shadowy thing is apparition not that giant tall freaky looking dude there right? <laughs> you know what Holy i never fuck. had my eyes on him until now that guys terrible that that's the, the grinning man? man that's the grinning man right there Holy. that guy is absolutely terrifying. well that's her grandfather there apparently um and then that 
you know, whitish clear uh, apparition in front of him is supposed to be um, what she interprets as a extraterrestrial being that was perhaps interacting with her on Uh, this, uh, this occasion. And she, and let's, and she's a newborn here. Like she's a baby yeah. and she's just, she has the, that kind of mental capacity where she's like, I remember this day and I remember staring at this being and I have photos to back well, it up. She's a superior she's human got being. Superior DNA. That's yeah. right. She was well, chosen she said, for I mean, she definitely says like in this picture, you can see me as a infant and I am looking in the direction of this apparition. So therefore she assumes that she was perceiving this creature or this uh, whatever this, this being. So she's thinking that this was a day that she started perhaps being marked for uh, abduction or observation. And if, if you're just listening, we'll explain it. It's a family photo from 1946. And yeah, she's, a, she's a baby. Like it's, she's just, they're standing in front of a, like a stone building and there's this by the church. I'm pretty sure the church. The church. This is the day of her christening. So okay, I'm makes sure, sense. I'm yeah. that's her church. And yeah, over the shoulder of, I'm guessing like her father. Um, I'm not sure who that one is. I know her grandfather is the one who's standing with the, the slick back yeah. hair. <laughs> this guy's fucking terrifying. It's fucking lurch. <laughs> He's humongous. So yeah, there. And I, I believe she's being held by her godmother. Is oh, okay. Holding. So yeah, it's a, like a little uh, a wispy apparition over the shoulder. Right, it's a ghost. Looks like a, a, a uh, yeah. go- ghost artifact. Looks like a g- ghostly. You could definitely say that, and not any kind of camera issue from the nineteen forties. It's like that's a standard that's the height ghost. of technology back then. Come yeah, on. like that's hundred percent ghost, <laughs> alien. So even after this, uh, her earliest memories of her actual earliest. Mm, you know, recollections Our, of interacting <laughs> with extraterrestrial beings is says that she, they come from when she was age three and she recalls long robe figures uh, entering into her room without going through doors or anything like that, like opening something like a portal or coming through the walls and being able to hand her some sort of telepath which which she assumes telepathically controlled ball of floating plasma like they presented her with this glowing object about the size of a tennis ball she says and then they would just kind of tell her to to think at it like make it do right. things back and up, the ball up. would float around the room you know and she she found that quite entertaining as a, as a, any 3 year old i'm sure would yes. and uh any 33 year old also Right. Yeah. Us too. <laughs> I think be pretty, I'd be impressed. Cool. I'd be fucking pissing my bed. <laughs> I don't know if do with that shit. Um, but aside from that, it must have been a warm up because Scroll then up. apparently they would show her okay. images um on this on the wall of her nursery. So somehow project video images onto her wall and she says now that she recognizes them for, for what they were, that they were actually depictions of str- struggles on earth. I'm not sure if they were like her personal struggles, but or or just, like, she, she, I, she seemed that said that they were either previous or future struggles of earth. Right. So it, to Pre- me, I'm like, like, okay, so this, this, like you're showing this three-year-old like pictures of like Nazis marching down, like in front of the Reichstag <laughs> and like all that stuff. You can imagine like they play over when Cartman is, uh, you know, <laughs> fantasizing about founding the fourth Reich or whatever. <laughs> so it's just like, they're showing her that and she's a three-year-old and it's like, I didn't understand at the time, but now I know. And it's like, Oh, okay. Right. Hmm. So that happened. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was the thing. She has them. Well, she as a superior human being. So at three years mm-hmm. old, her mental capacity is already through the roof. Sure. I, they were preparing her for something, I suppose. Uh, for what? Not quite sure. Not sure. But, <laughs> so anyways besides these long uh hooded these long robed uh creatures or beans that that seem to hang out in her nursery her neck's very vivid and probably like i think this is the first one that she really recalls um is the 
encounter with a reptilian humanoid when she was age five in the <laughs> summer of 1951. Yeah. I, it's a specific reptile, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a specific yeah. reptile in the sense that she goes, it's a reptilian, which we all know what that looks like. But then to reinforce it, to make sure it's not <laughs> what you think it looks like at all, she goes, a reptilian, you know, like a turtle without a shell. And I went, huh? <laughs> what? I'm like... So I just like a wrink, like an old wrinkly looking <laughs> ball sack. Balls. <laughs> Green old ball sack so you got with f- no shell. You got Franklin showing up with no <laughs> shell <laughs> holding you out of your crib. <laughs> and then she draws the stereotypical reptilian. I was like, bitch, it doesn't look like a turtle at all. I was like, these photos are shit. <laughs> it looks actually looks exactly like King Koopa from the fucking movie. It, it does. Her it picture exactly of it, like King Koopa. It's, if, if Ryan can get it, it looks like King Koopa. But uh, it is, she describes it as a turtle with no shell, you know, reptilians, right. um, which I would never have described them as that if I've never seen one though. So maybe we, there's a huge misconception on what we all think reptilians look like and they just look like old leathery green <laughs> ball sacks. Wrinkly ball sacks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This, yeah. This picture book's not in chron- chronological order here. No, so. it's all over the fucking place. Yeah. It's all over the place. Uh, so, someone said like Mitch McConnell. <laughs> yeah. The encounter she said started after she had watched this, some type of saucer like craft land in the middle of the field near her home, which was in uh, Cove, uh, Farnborough, uh, UK. And so she had approached this craft uh, through the field, uh, which had overgrown long grass at the time. And she was trying to stay out of sight of the object. Like she was trying to stealthily approach this craft as, you know, as a curiosity as, as a child would kind of take you. Does. Yeah. And this, uh, she says that she remembers this reptilian King Koopa creature, uh, like kind of coming out of nowhere and then blocking her way, um, towards <laughs> the, you know, blocking her view of the craft and then proceeding to drag her to the craft. All right. There's a, there's a picture of the reptilian. Yeah. It looks that's, like that's, a rep, fuck, like a fucking reptilian. Yeah, Jack's reptilian too. Skipping arm day. Yeah, yeah, Jack, look at the biceps on that thing. But I, this was, she looks much older in this picture, though. Or is this not her? She's but, probably. Like, I don't know if that's the drawer. picture. I know there's. I know there's the picture that they put in all the articles of her being dragged off. Like, is and you know, my favorite part about that is the fact that she's being dragged off because you're like, you look at her now and you're like, well, maybe she was a little bit of a hefty kid, and maybe these tractor beams have weight limits, <laughs> so they have to track her to the fucking tractor beam. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, so these things legit, like she of her photos she has, uh, it depicts them basically just grabbing her by the arms and dragging her through the field. Right. She estimated the height of this creature to be at least five feet tall. And when she got to the ship and they took her up into it, she said she entered into some sort of black uh, solid cylinder that came down from the craft, apparently, like from the craft itself uh, down to the ground after they entered into it and then they exited it out. She said that there were other creatures. She's not, she's not, I don't think she gives an exact number, but she says that she remembers, uh, uh, other like signs of movement within the craft. And it was difficult to discern the numbers because the craft inside was pretty much completely dark, except for a couple of lights. And this led her to assume that these creatures didn't need light to function. At least, well, could, at least not visible. light. Well, hold on though, but they did, because all their buttons had to be lit up, right? Well, she, I mean, yeah. I, she but said I'm the control like, panel was all lit up, and right. that's how she could see the shadows moving back and forth. So I'm like, well, if they had, if they had the keyboard had to be lit up, that would say to me that they, in fact, did need light in the dark, or else they didn't know which buttons to push. So what you're saying is they could have just had the lights off. Yeah, I think they just had the lights off. <laughs> Either way, she's young, so give yeah. her, we'll give her a break on that one. So now, as a five-year-old, you don't know what's going on. You're in some strange craft. And then, of course, the uh, pretty much the, the normal way that these things are, you know, it seems to be a common trend with alien abductions. Uh, shortly after she's taken into this craft, she is uh, stripped of her clothes, placed on a cold surface, and then subjected to a painful examination, which included uh, 
she claimed it some type of instrument that the creatures used to kind of probe her legs, I guess. One uh, one exceptionally brutal technique, I guess, left uh, a scar, or she claims she has a lasting scar. Oh, no, there's no claim. Calf. We saw it. Yeah, we've seen it. It's a little, I'm, well, I mean, it's unequivocal proof. Yeah, we've seen it. It's a, a tiny, uh, a blemish. tiny, <laughs> tiny blemish in her skin. Uh, she, there's actually a great interview with her on it where uh, she's, she must be talking with some local, like just local news channel. And she tells them like, yeah, I have scars. They're like, can we see one? And mm. she pulls up her pant leg and she's like, yeah, it's right here. And the girl like leans way in and like, you can see her like rub her finger on it. And she goes like, oh yeah, well, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then just leans back. Yeah. But what then she's like, yeah, what do you look, what do you think about these skid marks? <laughs> yeah. She goes, yeah she, <laughs> what do you think about, I got skid marks too. And we're like, well, yeah. she, she said that they, were scoop marks like they scooped something out of her arm? Yeah. Oh, scoop marks. Yeah, scoop well, skid I marks. I was I like, that's no, 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 no. Like, like a little, like a oh. tiny little ice cream scoop for your skin. That's what you, she's saying. Like, they that's sell definitely it. not what that looked like. You yeah. didn't. You didn't. Oh, you, you were wondering why me and Andrew were giggling like little kids when she said that. <laughs> skid marks. Like, yeah, skid marks. <laughs> I thought. I thought you just heard it as scoop, I scoop marks. She, she had fucking now racing you, stripes. In her now that pants. you say it, yeah, it makes more sense. So after this encounter, she does have other uh, memories of not, not not to the extent of interacting with these these beans, but she does have. Uh, starting from this day, she realized that she did you say beans? Started seeing, no, what? beans beans yeah, beans like oh. Chairman Beans beans yeah, beans. yeah, yeah that's what beans. I said beans that's what you said beans he's the chairman of beans chairman of beans beans so sorry <laughs> Dan go on about the beans. Yes, about the beans. So Pinto and Black and Kidney. Um, <laughs> Don't forget about Garbanzo. It's the best one. And the Garbanzo. Chickpeas as well. Mm, the best one. Chickpeas counts as beans. I'm sure. You know. Delicious. Nice hummus. I love me some hummus. <laughs> um, but the next one that she really uh, says sticks in her mind is in 1955 when she was age nine. Or, or sorry, at in 1955, age nine, she actually moved to another town. So uh, she moved to Holly Estate in Farnborough, which is about two miles away from where she lived before. And here is where she said that she met one of her lifelong friends, Janet, and they managed to see a craft in... What was that? Oh, nothing. He was just doing his... He just did a... Hey, Janet. (laughs) It's hey, Janice. Janice. That's Terry Tate Tate, off his linebacker. (laughs) (laughs) That's Simone's cake. Sorry. Um, so during the summer holidays of 1958 or 59, she's not 100% sure. Uh, she said that she and Janet were standing at the bottom of their road uh, where they lived. And they said that in the sky, they could clearly see some type of object. They ended up uh, witnessing some type of saucer shaped disc. And then she describes it having some sort of dark cutout. And in fact, like she, she assumed this was a doorway because she said that she observed standing in it within this dark cutout shape, uh, you know, square shape on the side of this officer craft. There is a quite tall and hefty looking individual dressed in white. So a, a, looking in a mirror, a saucer with a silhouette doorway and then a, a like a glowing white figure in the door. I just, she just says it is a white uh, dressed in white. So dressed not in white. glowing is just dressed in white, perhaps some type of robe or something like that. But for some reason it was hanging like this saucer was flying over their heads and there's a, a chunky, uh, hefty, chunky dude. robe dude, a hefty. So it's like boss hog dude. popping out <laughs> yeah. of the fucking saucer. <laughs> hey boy. Yeah. And th- she has a drawing of it. It's depicted during the day. Like, yeah, it was during the day. So like, so I guess it's just really dark on the inside of the craft. Have superior yeah. vision to be able to Vant, see something. Like Vanta black. <laughs> dark, is that darkest? The, the darkest black? Yeah, I think so. It absorbs all like ninety nine percent of light. It's just some saucer like zipping over their head, and there's just a, some fat dude like, like hanging, hanging out, out the like, side. <laughs> Ladies, <laughs> I, Ladies. In the picture, if you go back, it depicts her waving. She was waving oh, I at lost it. it. I think oh, she was pointing at. It. I think she was pointing at. It, it looked like a wave like to she's me. Flipping the bird. Giving them the business. <laughs> she's, yeah, she's pointing at it. There look like like yeah. I can see a middle finger sticking up. Fuck there. you. That's what's happening there. Um, I love this story because Janet also came forward, and we have many accounts of her personal account of seeing this as well. Right? 
Or am I mistaken? That's my first time here. Mistaken on that point. (laughs) Yes, because Janet's never come forward. We don't have any. Janet's not the superior being. Yeah, Yeah. but that's Hillary. If if you're like, if I was like, if tomorrow me and Dan did a podcast and I said, me and Zell were walking around, you know, and we saw, we seen an alien. I pointed it. There was a hefty white man that was looking at us from it. I would expect you to come on and be Braden. I'm taking it to the grave. Listen. It's sitting right there in fucking Crayola, right in front of you. What more do you need? There's picture <laughs> evidence of it. Say, you Are you get, come on now. In a quizzical. In, in or on quizzical. It's right there. What more do you need? That's pretty good, too. Thank you. I'd take it to the grave. Yeah. <laughs> just, leave you, <laughs> just leave you hanging. Like, I... I don't know. <laughs> it's in Crayola. Reason, you know can't shit. dispute it. It's irrefutable. <laughs> um, uh, what else do we have with... Her next significant sighting uh, she has is in 1962, and this one was actually during the Cuban Missile Crisis, which she vividly remembers. Um, you know, this is a traumatic global event for pretty much everybody, where the world seemed to stand on the precipice of a complete nuclear war. Um, she says, like during the night that the like October 28th and into the 29th, so sometime between in in the either the late evening or early morning. Uh, she says that she was visited by a long white robed figure and <sighs> who spoke to her telepathically. You know, she said says two different no stories. She has two different stories here because she says long white robe, but then the photo she has, we can't show them no, because listen. they're uh, 18A. <laughs> uh, were you talking about this guy here or? No, no. Oh, okay. the, no that's the photo of that Nordic one. Oh, well, I, th- yeah, but I don't think that's the one that she's talking about. Like, I, th- she definitely says that she remembers him kind of at least looking a bit. She compared it to Jesus because she thought he was Jesus at first. Uh, okay, apparently. listen, if that if that other drawing is supposed to be Jesus, then I'm fucking Christian right now. <laughs> she said, well, she's she compared it to Jesus because she did say that she when she when she looked at its hand, it was holding the hand in the very the the typical way that you'll find statues of Jesus Christ, where it's kind of like the first you know thumb. And uh, index finger and your middle finger like up, and then the two other fingers like closed. Let's see it down. down. Can you do it for us. Like, like, like that. There we go. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, that's the symbol. You know, that's the Jesus hand. Jesus symbol. throwing up gang well, signs. It's like the, yeah, it's like the typical. Get the buddy you know, Christ. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Throwing up gang signs. Not, it's man. definitely not. She did. Yeah, she definitely say, didn't say buddy Christ. So he's definitely wasn't giving it a thumbs up. She should have because that's more, way more universal. <laughs> Um, but she, but like you guys said, um, this led her to believe now when she goes back and looks back on the experiences with the, um, you know, the knowledge that she has now of the different types of, uh, uh, aliens or different races of aliens. She says she, she believes that this is probably one of the Nordic aliens because it, it so resembled human. It was the most human like, right. Yeah. Um, but she said that just, it communicated with her, told her everything it was going to be okay or it was not going to cause her any harm. And then that was it. Like, that's all she remembers or all she recalls from that night. So that one, mm. that one does, doesn't want do her any harm, but the ones who pinned her to the table and scooped flesh out of her. Well, but later she says like, she's on record saying later that all the aliens intentions are evil. And the good memories that people have of them are like been implanted in them and they're not real. They're like fake memories. Um, yeah. She, um, okay. So, okay. Come on. In 1969 is probably when she starts to feel like definitely these creatures or these beings mean her harm of some type or are not as um, benevolent as she might think. Because on December 23rd, she suffered a a miscarriage, a traumatic experience in itself um, at 20 weeks, as she said. Oh, late. um, Late one, too. Yeah, really late. So after this, she says that she had a follow-up visit after the event uh, and she was uh, going to a female doctor where she had been before. I In her book, she says a female doctor she had been before. I'm not sure this was like her attending doctor that which uh, had, you know, been with her through the pregnancy. But um, she said that she when she went to this doctor, she was shocked to find that they didn't have a record of her pregnancy. So this is when she said that she started to suspect that perhaps medical practitioners knew are the aliens. That, well, not necessarily. <laughs> well, not necessarily that they're the aliens, but that perhaps they had knowledge that the uh, alien hybrid 
program. Fetuses were being implanted in women. So they're part of the cover. Well, right on it. But why would they know, like, all right, no, I don't want to pick this apart too much, but like, why would they not have a record then? Like, it, say if they were in it, like, wouldn't they fake a record and be like, yeah, you had a perfectly healthy baby Glorup. Uh, it's, no, it's, she she kind of goes on to the theory where she believes that they were trying to hide from her like she had like anything had happened. So they're like, well, we don't have you any record. It's just safer that way for them to be like claim that we have no record. There's no extra explanation. There's no extra documentation that need that that needs to exist. You're just like, we don't have any record of you ever being pregnant or this pregnancy. But then hey. for her to say like, oh, well, obviously the doctors are in on it. Well, I would be like, she misses all this time. She has this, maybe this was all like, maybe she was missing enough time where, or she had us implanted memories for her to tell all her stories and be like, the doctor's got to be in it. I'm like, uh, well, why wouldn't it be the aliens? Listen, like, the you, alien. know, you know, they're already in on the pandemic. So come on. Yeah. These guys are pocketing money from fucking left and right. So she got, she has a hybrid like miscarriage, hybrid baby that miscarriage. Perhaps that the miscarriage had been a result of an this an alien fetus being implanted in her because she says she, she recalls during this event that um that like the doctor because she had the miscarriage during I think it was like her mother in law's birthday at the time when she was married. Uh, everybody knows like, it was humans can't have miscarriages, so that does line up. It does make sense. And so the doctor would not allow her to see it or took it away really fast when it and did happen don't want and so she didn't get a chance to see it so she's not so want to she's see gonna, it. that seems like the last thing you'd want don't to experience want yeah. to see it especially if it was a half alien well so, that's but why that's why she says that yeah. perhaps that's why they wouldn't let her see it she's saying that maybe if she would have saw it she would have saw that it was some type had of four, you know, it would have had features arms. that she could tell that it was a definitely not a human or you'll be traumatized for the rest of your fucking life because it's not yes, that a too. pretty thing at all. <laughs> Possi- a very, it's, very it's awful. It's high, high possibility that it's also it's happening. Fucking traumatizing. So the doctors are not in on the scam. That Well, this pandemic. is what she begins, she begins to suspect. So in 1972, Hillary, uh, Hillary's daughter is born, uh, but prematurely. And she was wearing two, she weighed like two pounds and 11 ounces. Oh, shit. And um, after the birth, after the birth, I, uh, in her book, I think there is um, some evidence of like complications or something during the, the pregnancy or during the birth. And she said that she had to receive stitches uh, after the actual birth, which caused her severe discomfort. And she had to wait at least 10 months to be able to receive corrective surgery to take care of the problem. Oh, brutal. Now, when she went into the hospital, this this reads like a just straight out horror story. But um, she when she went into the hospital, she said it was kind of it was supposed to be like a, a relatively simple procedure, supposed to be kind of in and out. She was only supposed to be under anesthesia for like uh, not that long, maybe a, a, a couple hours or whatever. But she said that the anesthesia pretty much knocked her out for 17 hours. And she says that when she awoke, uh, she recalls it being around sometime prior about 4 a.m. And she felt the need to go to the bathroom. So she got up out of the bed uh, and on the way to the bathroom, she said that she felt compelled um, or something just kind of uh, triggered in her mind that she she noticed or took notice of this light green cupboard that she had seen the day before. And. She goes in and she says she I'd like I she felt like she had to open it or look what it was inside. So when she opened it, she said that she saw inside there pretty much no less than 30 jars of these deformed fetuses which she Whoa. said ranging from 3 months to 25 weeks and that these fetuses were Definitely or definitely didn't look human. Uh, Where's the screen? She described them having large black just eyes with no room. eyelids. It's just no in ears. the room, unlocked with her. It's just some large green cabinet. She just she's like, it's not even. Yeah, it's not in, in any locked room. I think she just said she saw this green cabinet and she had. To get, they, she said it had, they had feet but no toes. So she had a snooze and, for seventeen hours, right? And then she goes and, in the creepy, creepy fetus room. Yeah. Yeah. She must have had fucking well, Michael Jackson. It's doctor. like, well, I gotta go to the bathroom, but I also gotta look into long. this green cupboard that was probably glowing. I don't know. Yeah, 100% <laughs> glowing with some smoke, and the doors were like <laughs> 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 the Jum- Jumanji music's playing yeah. in the background. 
Um, she said that all of these fetuses appear to have some sort of strange or similar strange red mark on the middle of their chests and that they seem to be ordered by age. So you had like the smaller jars, I guess, ordered like up to the big jars. So this is in the so. still in the hospital. Yeah. It's this in was her she was still in the hospital. Wow. Could have been an alien spaceship at all for all we know at this point. Oh, so her me- well, yeah, it could just be a, a false memory. Could have beamed her up already. So she just checks out this cabinet. There's a bunch of jars of developed developing fetuses in jars. Yeah. Of right. Aliens. Definitely that don't appear to be human. They have yeah, small eyes, less facial facial features, and they look like I guess like what? Like a gray? Like a gray yeah, little alien like gray. That. I guess your your typical uh, description of a gray alien. And so, uh, yeah, she she went to the bathroom and then she kind of didn't think about it, I guess, because she says she went home and she didn't really think about it until way later. The alien I feel like that would be in your fucking nightmares for yeah, the rest of your that life. That would be probably in yeah. the forefront of my <laughs> mind on. the entire time didn't I was in that room. Didn't think about it. <laughs> I believe I in there, been like, oh, sleep. It's, it's not a big like, deal. I'd be like, somebody needs to fucking know about this. Like, <laughs> whip that thing open. Like, why are you guys keeping jars of fetuses in the rain on the way to the bathroom? It yeah. would like, literally yeah, could, be my first question that the when the nurse came to fuck? check on me. I'd be like, uh, what's with that green cabinet full with all the alien babies who in the there? the fuck did you hire to decorate this place? <laughs> this is a problem. <laughs> oh, Stru- that's a little, that's what was she? So, like, she got stitches. So, was she on like some type of like anesthesia or something? Like, well, that's, what, that's what I said, that she had to go under for anesthesia for them to remove these stitches Okay, uh, or to d- d- actually, I don't know if it, re- it was some sort of corrective surgery, some sort of corrective uh, process that they had to do. So they had to knock her out for it. So um, I think she said the anesthesia lasted longer than they had planned it to. So she was only supposed to be there, I think, like one or two days, but ended up being there like three days because of the some sort of complication with the anesthesia said she was out for 17 hours, which wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> um, Conrad Murray. So the next one, she um, at, at this point, I believe she starts keeping like a pretty much like a UFO diary. Um, she starts keeping uh, records of her sighting, like mysterious objects and things like this. Uh, pretty much anytime she has pretty good recall of most of these events. Yeah. Um, but there are some that stand out from the arrest. Uh, so um, like, let's see, what are we? Some tells me she um, maybe took some like community college art courses because her drawings get substantially better. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's she a matter must have of also, I think she also got a degree in seismology at one point. Yeah. <laughs> and we get, do we want to talk about that? We want to come back to that. Yeah. Take a break. Yeah. We'll, come, we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll, go, we'll take a quick refill. Well, yeah, break she here. T- talks about <laughs> her alien team up. <laughs> yeah. It's a <laughs> intergalactic team up. Nice. After the break. <laughs> a nice ET meeting on the beach. We'll be right back. We're back. So, along with her qualifications as a superior human being, apparently Hillary Porter, which is we haven't also, gone through yet, we haven't gone through yet, but we'll get to that. <laughs> but she's also, she's also apparently an interly interplanetarily known seismologist. seismologist. <laughs> Explain this. This is ridiculous. So in 1977, um, she says that she had a um, like a sudden memory recall, and she she recalled a memory um, that she suspects had probably um, been part of what she calls a cover memory, which is a concept uh, that has been brought up in other alien abduction cases, where it is suspected that um, during some of these abductions. Uh, certain beings will um, the abductors will implant false memories mm-hmm. over the memories of abductions or encounters. Um, therefore it, it, you know, some people theorize that this is perhaps uh, an easier way than having to delete the whole memory itself. You know, it's a bit more surreptitious where it's like, you can just like slide in a false memory of, yeah, something it's, else it's, happening. Something similar it's that like, happened. Uh, Rick and Morty, where he just, mind blowers, <laughs> mind blowers. And or they, if you've ever seen People of Earth, like if you ever seen People of Earth, which is a great show. There's only two seasons of it, but that show is fucking great. Well, they, they suck the memory out. Yeah, and then in and, 1977, they implanted the memory of when she joined the Vindicators. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Stole my joke. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, you son of a bitch. Oh, Joe, there we go. You want to uh, say it louder? No. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
in this particular memory, Hillary said that she um, observed some humanoid aliens performing uh, seismic tests on the breach of the River Severn, which is, I guess, it's east of, um, or sorry, west, over to the west of uh, <laughs> Cove or whatever, I guess, a popular vacation spot or holiday spot. And um, so when she saw these creatures doing these things there, I, she approached them and they asked her to join the team. <laughs> How well, the it fuck? makes fucking perfect. That, that's probably why she packed on all those fucking pounds. <laughs> Let's be honest here, boys. For they seismic, probably go, seismic yeah. testing. Well, they're like, all right, lady, you hop on this fucking diving board and just belly flop. Let's test it. Let's see how it goes. So, wait, wait, wait. So that's her memory that she recovers or she has. She's on the beach. There's aliens. And the like, e there's aliens on this beach. With like, and she sees with them. And she and graphs. And she knows exactly yeah, they're what they're doing. They're in green coveralls. She says they're wearing like green coveralls. Like, they're just like, they're suited up to do science. They're, I guess. they're on the beach. Like, they should be wearing fucking jean cutoffs, playing volleyball, listening to playing with the boys. No, they're doing science. They're doing science. They're they're doing science. They have to be wearing coveralls. And, and, and she, just knows, gun, she just knows that they're doing seismology somehow. She's. Well, I don't think actually. I don't think she knows they're doing seismology until they tell her. Actually, oh, she, she well, goes up to them like and they you know, want to and, join the team. <laughs> well, she walks up to them and she says they kind of like she implies they just kind of noticed her, like noticing them, and they're like, "Hey, do What's you want to join? You want to help us out?" And then they get her to run along the beach, which, to Andrew's point, Andrew's point makes sense that maybe she was doing the seismic test. By running. I could see that. There's I could see them holding those little water glasses like in Jurassic yeah. Park with the Boom. fucking Boom. <laughs> Yeah. As far as I can tell, I don't think Hillary is not a uh, seismologist. She's not a geologist of any type. She's never studied Let's geology be honest of any too, type. Like, um, she's also not so an indicator. I'm going to tell you right now, been. she probably didn't get up to a pretty high speed either. No. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> she said after these uh, creatures seem to appear to have completed their tests or their uh, their surveys or whatnot um they instructed her uh like she said to run down the beach and they were there they were like all going i guess all the aliens were like hey run down the beach towards these these houses that you see over there and then head over to the clearing between them and then uh enter into a vehicle that'll be wait waiting there for you so she does that which, fucking badass you know rocky montage down the beach in rocky three yeah. racing apollo creed well, I imagine it more like um, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, like just like jumping over fences and stuff, like <laughs> running through fences. I imagine. Um, and when she gets Squishing there, sand she, says first, <laughs> she says that first in her memory, she recalled like seeing like multiple small vehicles, but then she says her memory kind of shifts, and then she actually sees um, or perceives a twenty foot oval UFO that is waiting for her, and then she's taken on board just this for craft. Her. And then she's able to observe um, these these beings like g flying the craft, operating the craft. And then she said that there is a um, there is a, she she vividly remembers a uh, display which showed like a grid like map, and what she recognized was actually like the geography of where she was. And then that there was like a small blip on there, and that was the representation of the craft that was moving through there. And then she also remembers there being a curved transparent window, apparently on the front of the craft to, to be able to view. And you could have like a good view of out what's going on in front of the craft and, you know, below you. And then she says that that's where her memory ends. Like, so just she gets, stops. she gets picked up on the seismology team on the beach. Yeah. Yep. She's lured, taken back to a craft that seems to be waiting for her, where then they show her the inner workings of the UFO. I, I, not even that they just like bring her on they're just like okay it's like flight of the navigator time and we're gonna like just take off they, I guess like I mean they obviously <laughs> spotted those superior genetics from pretty far away they knew what they're doing that's it was they scanned her yeah they knew this this is a one of a kind human right here well, what they were doing is they were looking to size her for some green coveralls <laughs> 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 um so after after this one, I think is when she starts getting more, uh, her, her experiences seem to be more and more, um, I don't like want to say it. like she becomes more and more like physically affected by this to leave a little bit more physical evidence. According to her in 1978, she said that she had observed a long tube like UFO for a, for a second. She, like she observed this UFO moving over her neighborhood um, for for a long period of time, or what she perceived as a long period of time, and this 
when it approached her, it actually somehow there's there was no mention of like a light or anything. It seemed to appear over her. Um, if you're looking at the live stream, yeah, it had like one light, it had like a green light and like a white light on the back. And she said that when it hovered over her, she dropped down, uh, apparently paralyzed by this craft. She was, um, she she was the only like one present, so she, but she did manage to drag her. It wasn't total paralysis. She just felt like she couldn't move or she, like she was having difficulty moving. <laughs> hey, it's a Leo I, from, I, I uh, have a, I have a just quick question. And this is, is Janet there. No. So Andrew, can, can you kind of have paralysis like this? If you're having a stroke or have a stroke. hundred Well, it de definitely you can have whatever and side deficits only, in the situation. The only reason I say that is because of all the interviews that we've watched with her. Like she has some serious face droopage and I, I've she, questioned, I want, I wonder if she's had a stroke or has had a she stroke. She definitely looks like she has facial droop. Like she has a permanent de deficit from a previous stroke. Right. And definitely when I look, then when I read this about, she looks up, <laughs> she's, she's stroking out. And she's, she's a fucking she's has a stroke. <laughs> and then is potentially paralyzed. I don't mean to make, try listen, to make I, a joke. Hey, about listen, it I, I'll, stroke. I'll tell you right now, I've responded to fucking more strokes than I can count. And I've never heard anyone say they've seen a fucking spaceship or hallucinated in any shape or form. So, so, yeah. And she also says that she managed to drag herself. Like she managed to drag herself inside of the house. That lines up uh, though with having deficits on one side. Cause yeah, one side like, of your body's working. Yeah. Your other side's not. I'm just picturing uh, Leo from uh, Wolf of Wall Street when he gets all fucked up. <laughs> totally, man. <laughs> he's, he's, just, he's, just, he's just trying to crawl into the car. I'm not kidding. That, 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 that right there looks like a stroke. Those symptoms, like the, the just paralysis. Just trying to drag your body like that? 100%. Hmm, maybe. And she says that she managed to drag herself. Uh, her number one concern at the time was her daughter because she was, uh, at this point, at least she was recently divorced. Yeah. Um, she was living with her, uh, raising her daughter as a single mom. And she was worried about her daughter. I think um, even, even the time, like, I, I, I don't think she can remember. She did talk about, like, having a feeling that these things were here for her, for her daughter. She she was worried that that the experiences that she was having her daughter would be subjected to the same. She's got half those superior genetics. So yeah, she's so prime target. Yeah, so she said that she managed to drag herself up the stairs to her daughter's room. And then she like flopped into the, her daughter's bed and would like fully clothed with her shoes on everything, whatever. But then she says that she remembers waking up and then upon regaining consciousness, she said that she found this, <laughs> Yeah, burns. painful burn or what appeared to be some type of burn, which uh, a burn or a type of rash or something along one side of her body or at least on one side of her face. I mean, listen, I just bad, I just yeah. want to do a quick little fucking disclaimer here. If you have to drag yourself up into your bed because half the side of your body is not working. Mm hmm. Call 911. You're probably having a stroke. Yeah, fast. Time is brain. Yeah, fast. The faster you get into the fucking hospital, the faster thing can do TPI. Like, just don't do that. Go to call nine one one, please. So, well, she doesn't. She doesn't do any of those things, I and know. she has facial this, uh, arm now, speech time. She has this. She wakes up with this really bad rash that she said that or it's some sort of painful <laughs> rash on the side of her face. <laughs> um, she said she tried to apply an ointment. You know why? Because she was dragging know. herself face down through the, all the poison carpet ivy. burns on the side of her and face, <laughs> hence the skid marks. It's all making sense. Uh, but it's a good thing though, because it was only a Saturday morning. And she had no right. plans that weekend, mm -hmm. so she didn't have to go in public. No. And then by Sunday evening, the and the rash was completely. Did gone. she take any pictures of the rash as a curiosity? Well, no. Or did she draw some fucking Crayolas? She drew a picture, so that's as good as a photo. Yeah, she yeah. drew some Crayolas, so that's and fair. it healed up miraculously on Sunday. She's got yep. superior genetics. She's got a healing factor, just like Wolverine. <laughs> yes. She, yeah, sense. she heals a thousand times faster. Can than we get to the normal. bottom of this really quick? Like, am I, am I skipping too far, far ahead or can we explain no, one, to why she feels more like she's being one, abducted the, more than anybody? The, what she describes as the turning point. Like, this is probably one of the most um, this last one, uh, yeah. significant of her encounters. Now, she said on October 10th of 1994, this is what is known kind of as like a, the, the white jumper incident. Yeah. So she woke up this day, apparently, with a, she is a um, sufferer of um, migraines. As like uh, many are, yeah. Uh, what's, what's the word for that? I can't remember the... Um, migraines. Constantly. What's up, sorry? Well, when you... When you she's migraines. like a serial sufferer of migraines. Like she has migraines all the time. Chronic migraines. Chronic migraines. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. I thought you wanted like the... Medical term. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, no. I was Dan. like, she has a chronic. She's a chronic migraine. Sometimes sufferer. Braden pulls uh, through. You know, hey, sometimes you get stumped on those low level words. Come to me. It's all the low level words. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
why we work <laughs> best as a team. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> Teamwork makes Everyone dream plays work. a part. Uh, so then uh, she woke up with a, what she describes like a strange bruise on her arm, like a bruise that apparently like she could see like veins coming out from it, like darkened veins, like going into it. And, uh, and then, so uh, on this thing, she's like, okay, well this, this happened. Um, she, she assumed this is perhaps some side of evidence of she's been taken. Cause I think at this point she's kind of accepted that she's been a, being abducted by aliens. Multiple, multiple and, times. Um, yeah. But but the thing that that apparently doesn't set her off that much because she's like, well, I'm not going to she doesn't go to the doctor, doesn't call 911, whatever. Um, but the thing that she found unusual, uh, very unusual is that she took out this white jumper, which apparently she had purchased uh, in the springtime. And now it started to get cold. So she took out this white jumper from her closet and uh, she found these unusual brown orange stains on it, uh, which she didn't remember ever. <laughs> having on so it. So now we're getting to the skid marks. Once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so on this day, she decided, I, I guess this, this was the day that she was going to get to the bottom of this. She said that she went to like a, like a couple of uh, bookstores, like one town over or whatnot, and uh, looking for books on the subject of alien abduction. And so she came across at least one book that mentioned uh, a type of substance that uh, a number of abductees had, had described as having a similar color to the stains that were on her jumper or she had mm. seen on her jumper. And she said that um, this book described that a lot of the book claimed that this, this substance would a lot of times evaporate after the abduction. So they would leave no evidence. And so she, she felt that she was actually lucky that this substance on her jumper was perhaps the same this, material or something. Is this the material that, on that one, uh, yeah, that they wanted to see the pictures of. Yeah, yeah, that's and, the one. And they said they'd so she, she would submit it. To, and she did to the TV network for analysis. And she did right. So if you find that video, that video on YouTube of her on Good Morning, it's just Good Morning. Something. <laughs> and listen, I don't know, it's a UK morning show. You have to go through it. seven minutes of like interior home. Yeah, yeah. before yeah. you get to the. Uh, you can skip ahead. Oh, um, quite a while. So yeah, they had her on the on this popular uh british morning show and uh this is when she said yes like uh, they asked her about the thing like would you let us test it and she said yes and so in her book she says that she agreed to have it tested and she sent it to them um and you know she had to sign a waiver a wave to say that you know if it's destroyed or damaged you know as you would like because it's your property sample they're going to cut out a piece of it or whatever they're going to do with it if it's damaged or destroyed you know you're you were not responsible for whatever so she sent it in and then she said that she kind of got like a letter back that said, like, we didn't, they sent it the jump back, back to uh, her. They said, fecal matter. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> we didn't find anything. They said, we didn't find anything of consequence, apparently, like this summary, why to sum it up. And um, so she a, felt a stain was nothing. Uh, well, she felt deceived because she's like, I know something was on there and they found nothing. And then she said that. Um, you know, they sent it back and it was pretty much destroyed because she, she showed a picture of like the jumper and they had just cut out like a piece of it. And then that was gone. Like it was a piece of the sleeve, like on the upper sleeve. Uh, I guess they had cut out like one of the stains. Yeah, it's fine. Everything's good. (laughs) It's good as new. So she said that she got like some of it back and she managed to, to submit it to another like independent, um, like forensic investigator to take a look at it. And the one thing that she found that was very interesting is they reported back saying that they found higher than normal radiation, background Background radiation radiation. (laughs) on the, uh, on the jumper. Like what, what's the normal and, level and of she said and she pretty much in the book she says aha you know suck it good morning <laughs> like yeah this is proof so so does every piece of like piece of clothing have like a background radiation that you can detect well is that what she's my saying kind of theory was like if they if they she sent the whole thing in like they might have you know contaminated it spe- well spectroscopy or something like that they have bombarded it with some type of radiation to be kind of be like to analyze it. Spectro- or whatever right. yeah to Bring out I, I don't know hundred percent like because it's not in there in her book and it's not a description. There's nowhere like a record of it to like what what test they performed on it, but it could possibly be something like they just hit it with radiation or something to be like whatever. Like or it was around something maybe radioactive, but I mean so then from she, what they could tell. So then she she applied or she took it to like a she did her own study and they're like, Yeah, there's a little bit of radiation on this baby. And she's like, God damn, I knew got I got the d- yeah, abducted. Got him. It. Got him. Hey, Dan, real quick. <laughs> were, you, were you looking for chronic migraines or cluster headaches? 
migraines. She says migraines. Okay. So. Yeah, I was right. Normally we call them could cluster, be cluster headaches. My, my, it could be cluster headaches. She just says migraines. Um, what's the difference between cluster headaches and it? migraines? Well, it's the frequency. Cluster. Um, you get them in large clusters, you'll get multiple of them. If it's just mm -hmm. one, it's a migraine. More okay. importantly, let's get into why her. Wow, well, superior human being. Yeah, well, exactly. Like we, it's a proven fact that people from, you know, Wales, Ireland, Scotland, those type of areas carry superior genetics. Because when we talk about superior genetics, we would like to focus on people who can't be in the sun longer than twenty minutes, right? Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I, yeah, I find it. This really fucking is funny because, like, I'm I'm half Irish. If you don't know this about me, and every ounce of my Irish DNA has resulted in. Five foot seven inches, <laughs> balding hairline at fucking 30 years old, and everything else, tiny calves, everything. <laughs> Get nothing good from that shit. <laughs> is that a thing Irish people are known for? Tiny calves? Yeah. This half Irish guy is. Yeah, it? it's bullshit. Um, but, we, but definitely, when you look like you're a bunch of people of like Irish fans, like sending in pictures of their calves now. <laughs> <laughs> Calf check. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I might get my chicken. Check. I might have got my chicken legs from the Habib side. But, <laughs> but no, seriously, Google this woman and just for, I'm just curious if the first thing that pops in your head is superior genetics. That's because I don't, well, I, I, shockingly, now, it does wasn't she, me. now does she make the click? I, I don't remember in her book, um, going through it, but it's like, does she, does she do that in one of her article or like she, her interviews or yeah, she claims she hundred percent claims that she's been chosen because genetic makeup, she has superior DNA. That's why she's been chosen or like targeted Did since she, she was a child. Why? She, uh, she just because says that's, I have superior DNA. From where she's from, people from those areas of the world have superior genetics. So I heard she ran the 40 in 433. 40 three. and 433. Three. Probably. I would like to see how many fucking reps a bench. Maybe got. like 40 He's feet. 40. She might do 40 feet yeah. in four seconds. She's like lucky. Pinnacle of human speed. Human the thing is, specimen. it's like everybody, we're being, we're all being assholes here. We're not fat shaming or anything like that, but like this woman put work in like those jowls, man. Like, that's just not like a little bit of like obesity. Like this is work. This well, is, and then yeah, but, this yeah, is like, but have you seen her calves? Like, no, <laughs> oh, they're big. They're jacked. They're, jacked. they're, they're, jacked. they're jacked. Uh, jacked calves. They're, uh, you know what though? Lots of big people have jacked calves. Like they have yeah, to. Yeah, they're called cankles. You, like no. <laughs> <laughs> you, you hold up a lot of weight. You have um, to. But so she so she goes home, like because I didn't like again, I didn't I didn't read this in her book, but it's like just on one of her interviews, she 100 percent says, like, I, I assume they're abducting me because I have superior genetics. Yes. She said she vividly said, like, people who have more than one chin have superior genetics. She did and not she did not, <laughs> but but she did not fucking say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe there's a little bit of exaggeration uh, there, but God damn it. So of, I'm it's like, Andrew's like, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. She, she does insinuate that that's perhaps why uh, it's, it, she goes into depth about um, her eggs and that's what they're after is um, human eggs and sperm. Well, yeah, not just her eggs, just other abduct uh, yeah. abductees. Right. Like uh, one of her experiences, she says she has like vivid memories or she has recollections of seeing like other female ad abductees like holding alien hybrid children or have they're like observing long lines and crutches like, you know, the little pods uh, filled with alien hybrid embryos and, and whatnot. So she's like, she's very set on the idea that these... Uh, these beings are have some sort of like a uh, you know crossbreeding uh, thing going on here. Oh, well, 100%. Well, um, we, we just talked to uh, Michael Masters about aliens from the future and Dr. That, Michael Masters. Dr. Michael Masters. That is apologies. a fucking beauty. Let's wait to that interview is gonna be awesome. It was that by Bill. Yeah, he <laughs> Go, or by, his or friends Bill. call him Bill. Guy we parties. know him as Bill. He does. Yeah. He parties. <laughs> We're cool enough to know him by Bill. Yeah. But, but that's what he was saying is that uh, aliens from the future have lost the ability to like reproduce normally. So they are going back in time to take eggs from human females. Which makes sense because with superior genetics. Look at the size of the little gray's wombs. They would be tiny. The gestation period would it. last for fuck the gestation period would be like four days. Okay. And if we're getting into the topic of like Mike Masters and his his theories. Oh, you're just gonna drop it, aren't you? What? Nasty in the pasty. Yeah. <laughs> 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 How does that nasty nasty? Well, here's the thing. It's like, you know, we talked with him about all these, why potentially are all these aliens coming back to the same people? And perhaps if they can time travel and it's various versions of us from various distant futures, what has seemed to be a lifelong experience of abduction has been her maybe 
being looked at by the small, say, let's say the Nordics, which are the closest to us. And maybe that's a few thousand years from now. They checked in on her throughout her life. And then because we have this, the Nordics have this log of like, oh yeah, we abducted this person in these times. Maybe, you know, another thousand years in the future, it's the tall grays and they're coming to see her various different times, right? Bunch of follow-up appointments. Exactly. Right up until reptilians and stuff where they no longer care. They're just dragging her through the house. (laughs) Like, like, we don't care anymore. Like, we're so far beyond you. Where's Mario? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But like, you know, I could see something like that. Um, one of the one of the things I really wanted to touch on though, because it gave me a great visual, is that she describes one of the crafts and how it would possibly work. And she said no human could board it. No human could board these in traditional means or yeah, something. Yeah, because they're interdimensional crafts. Um, you know, and she says that um from what she's seen, the entities on board these crafts are molecularly tuned in to the structure and fabric itself. And I just yeah. imagined a, a saucer. You walk in just a bunch of bulk held bills with their little bodies just <laughs> dangling around because they're just heads are part of the bulk. Just random body parts sticking out of the <laughs> fucking shit. Yeah, she does. She, she does throw out the, the idea that perhaps these, these creatures operate on a kind of different, <laughs> like existential vibration frequency where they exist on a different, um, a vibrational plane because she's like, how else, you know, she reasons this by saying like, how else could they pass seem to pass through the walls of my house and like come through and, and visit me it, without using doors or anything like that. They seem to just step through the doors, um, you know, s- seemingly immaterial and then boom. And then they're solid as anything like, they're, yeah, she said they like seem to like come through the wall, like a light emitted from the wall. And then these beans would step out <laughs> There's actually, I'm going to show one more picture. It's maybe, it's maybe the greatest photograph that she, uh, that she says. Sexy. It's the short grays coming out of the wall. Right. Yeah. One. And one's, and one's doing a sexy, sexy crawl. Right. Oh, that's the one that she said. Yeah. The, there always used to be a, she, yeah, she describes a number of grays, uh, and multiple occasions coming to visit her. And she says that there's one taller than the other ones one. And it, she said that she could identify the one that would always come up to her and seem to like, Look into her eyes. Sexy looks like he's somehow. fucking trying. Like he's I feel like that crawler. picture seducing me right now. <laughs> she is assu- what she assumed is like she was. He was trying to scan her mind, or he scanned mm. her mind. So she called him the mind scan man. The he's mind. getting ripped tonight. <laughs> so um, that sounds like a David Bowie song. So that should that should happen. <laughs> mind scan man. Uh, uh, it's like all right. It's 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 uh, something else. It's this tail <laughs> it's there's i mean there's a lot to unpack with it's her a good story tale because oh, there's a ton to unpack it, and like like, we're, like honestly be here for days yes yes <laughs> it it goes on and on and on um what do we think what do we think it is 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 this woman this genetic specimen genetic freak like scott steiner <laughs> getting, getting, getting picked up non-stop <laughs> Maybe they're like, maybe they got their, their hands on some like really old fucking texts from like the 1800s. And they're like, oh, like they say obese people are fucking, those are the guys. Those are the ones those that are in charge. Those are the rich ones. Those, those are, are the, the rich best ones. Those are the guys. Let's, we got to find one. Yeah. I mean, it's, we've talked about a lot of UFO and an abduction cases. <laughs> this one, I don't, I, it's, it's Crayola, hard don't lie, man. The Corolla. Well, the Corolla. there's zero corroborating <laughs> evidence ever against like all ever. her story. It's all her. No first one is even like That's it. Janet. I mean, where's I Janet? For Janet? Where's Janet? What there's about nothing. Ken? What about the Master of Beans? Damn it, yeah. Janet. Where the fuck is Ken? <laughs> yeah, Chan- Chancellor of Beans. Chancellor of Beans. The, or uh, Chairman of Beans. Chairman, Chairman of Beans. Of beans. Um, you wouldn't be hanging I, around Kate, for no reason. I think they're together. Right? Yeah, they they're are. They are together. Yeah, they're together now. So they're the Chairman and the Vice Chairman of Beans. Um, which is the British Earth and Aerial Mysteries Society, uh, right. beansinvestigations.org. Um, you Beans. can check it out. I mean, that's where you can get access to all her pictures and stuff, <laughs> you know, and all the people they've worked with. It, there's not a lot of information. I don't know what they're... There's a lot of... There's like okay, 90 pages of her art diary. Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, I mean, it's there's... If if Janet would have came forward or someone else with well, cooperating stories, you'd be like, okay, when well, like we this, this of all the ones we've talked about, this one 
has the least supporting, but the least supporting evidence, but also the most stories of one person. Um, well, here and like if you go to the Beams website, they have a they <laughs> they have this like thing where you can submit photos of cryptids and stuff. Which I was like, oh, okay, well maybe you know maybe this is this could be interesting. If you go to the Facebook, uh, Chai sent you the link. So this was the most reading site sighting of a nine foot tall Mothman submitted to the bean site and verified by beans. Um, and again, it's unequivocal proof, right? It's cited, um, 2021, April 3rd. It can be that, irrefutable, man. <laughs> look at that. Look at that photo evidence. <laughs> unequivocal. That's the photo. That's the photo. Hey, listen, that's pretty fucking good. I mean, it's, mm. it's not in mm. Crayola, but it's pretty good. That's actually the, when I look at that, it say photo. I can't read from here, but it's like, is this a save photo on it? There's it says with pictures. I mean, this is with picture. Is that the photo? That's though? the picture, Dan. Here's the here's the okay, opening. Well, that's the picture, but it didn't say photo. Here's the opening text. Hi, Ken and Hill. In the early hours of the of the morning, I saw a Mothman type cryptid creature outside of my back garden. I know this sounds absolutely absurd, but it's true. You gotta and, believe and that's it, man. The, is that is that the only picture? Well, when I look at that, that's it. Oh, so that was recently, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I look at that silhouette, that's Mothman. That's him. Got, well, kudos for them. He's got, more, still he's getting, got more bat. I mean, more style, more bat wing style. Yeah. Still well, getting reports. Mothman. That's the best photo of Mothman I've ever seen. Where's his antennas? Yeah. Well, it, it looks like he's got antenna. some hair going on there. I don't see any antennas. Um, so. Okay. Well, oh, final thoughts on this. this guy, one, right? He's got a long hair going on. It's a yeah. quarantine hair. Yep. It. For for me, I'm like. I like you listen to the interviews and stuff and you see her point out her little circular scar and the problem I have, the biggest problem I have with uh, Hillary Porter is that when she talks, like even in the interview, she goes, I have a photo. I have a photo. And she hands these two news reporters a photo and they look and they show it to the cat and you're like, it's not a photo. You That's, drew it. You drew a picture. You drew a picture that's not a photo. I'm like, why would you call it a photo? And she does that a lot. Like, you know, I have all these photos of this stuff and it's like, no, you don't. You have drawings. You've drawn these things. Um, I have a really, really hard time believing her story. Just about any aspect of it, which is she, she has all the telltale signs of someone that I don't believe. She's trying to profit off it. You know, she, she uses it for her personal gain, right? Her story doesn't make sense. There's never anyone around when this is happening, even though she other says Janet. other people and a dog, but no it's one else comes. To, no it's one Janet. else is willing to put, you know, come forward and say like, Hey, I was with her and they scooped her up and dragged her away. And what we saw this big, hefty Santa looking man in the Vanta black UFO broad daylight. No other sightings during that day, but, we seen it like n there's no corroborating evidence whatsoever. Her credibility for me is in the absolute mud um, on, a, on a scale from one to Gimlin. What are you giving her credibility? Zero, <laughs> zero Gimlins, zero Gimlins, zero to Gimlin. For yeah, zero to Gimlin credibility. That's a new scale. <laughs> zero. Um, it, it's, and it's a shame because I'm, I, when she starts to talk about her memories from a baby, I'm like, okay, hey, what? You don't remember this, right? Like you, you watch interviews with her. She can barely, she speaks just like me. <laughs> like, like mush mouth. Uh, but she's got an excuse. She had a stroke. What's your excuse? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I have some of those superior dreams too. All right, um, Edgar. Oh man. It's a, uh, it's just a hard one. It's a hard one to look at because it's so fucking wild and out there. And it's like, yes, yeah, so I was basically visited by every kind of alien. And she then will like in interviews, she'll be like, Oh, I met all these people and we just instantly knew each other. And how do you explain that? And I'm like, well, you had a connection. You guys were all probably excited to talk about your UFO experiences. Like you would have a connection. What? So you would, did you know your name? Did you know each other's names prior? Got, no. You got any Oscar music though? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> uh, uh, Check. Sorry. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you always oh, okay. And Andrew, what does Andrew think about this case? <laughs> no, you're up next. Let's go. Hey, I'm going to leave it with this. Crayola, don't lie, man. <laughs> Simple as that. I've seen it. It's legit to me. Yeah. Yeah. There you have it. I mean, I'm going to give, uh, 
I'm giving her mad props for the amount of effort and detail put into her story, the countless drawings and interviews and just the sheer amount of will to say that I've been visited by not just like the greys, but the Nordics, tall greys, reptilians. And all the medical professionals in the UK are in on it. The cowled and ones. Like, like the, she's really put together quite the tale here. And I'm going to give her mad props for that. But as far as all the UFO abduction or alien sightings, encounters, low, 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 low on the Gimlin scale for me. <laughs> Fun story. Good for her. Like she, she's done her, she's, she's kept at it. She's never let off. She's been doing it for a long time. So well, she's got bills to pay, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes, you know, you come across one that just, uh, the chairman of beans would be pissed <laughs> if she recanted. Sometimes you got to call one of these out. I mean, not every story draws interest to the UFO or alien phenomenon. And this is, this is one that would push people the opposite way. They're like, no way. No, no, I'm not looking into this one, but yeah. Dan, what do you think? Yeah. The, the lack of corroborating evidence, the lack of a Janet coming forward yep. and, and really backing up her story is the chancellor of beans weighs down. Doesn't on give you any credibility. <laughs> Definitely subs it sends it into like the sub negative Gimlin scale down there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we're getting on the Patterson side of the scale. <laughs> <laughs> you have um you have a person here who is obviously like she's intelligent. Like she's not she's she's not a dummy. Um and what she's done or she's they've they've organized this this group to get together and uh, support group, uh, for lack of a better word, of uh to for alien abductees, people who think or people who have experienced alien abduction. And um, if you read her book and like you kind of, if you, you know, kind of read between most of the stuff, if you, if you don't just go in for the, the alien abduction stuff, she, she has had a rather rough life. Yeah. Like uh, she has suffered a number of traumatic oh, yeah. experiences, um, which could probably trigger a couple of things. Like she's never, she said that she's never, submitted herself to a uh like a hypnotherapist uh like something like uh, other um alien abduction cases have pretty much been like you know that's the that's the go-to yeah you know you go to this you do the hypnotic regression or whatever sprinkles she said that she's never been motivated to do that because she feels that she fears that it would unlock something even more terrifying you know it, it seems like a lot of bad stuff has happened to her and it's maybe one of those things where she's looking to blame outside forces Right. For a lot of it. Um, and it, and it could be something like that. I could see it being doing something like that. Again, she's had, um, at least the one extreme, it sounded extremely traumatizing miscarriage. Um, she's had, I, I don't know if that was her only one. I think there might've been one or two, um, uh, you know, going through a divorce, um, you know, having to raise her daughter on her own, also having these, these experiences or these, um, uh, that, that are going on. She's unable to explain, um, she never, she never really, again, she never attended a therapist. She never tried to do any of that stuff or go to a psychologist. It seems like she just, and never reported any of this stuff to a medical professional to be like, this stuff is happening to me. doesn't seem like it in her book, at least. Well, they're all in on it, so it's not going to help anyways. (laughs) Right. So uh, could this be a result of, of that kind of like a, a buildup of the trauma or something like that? I could see that possibly happening. Um, but it, she also might, you know, one hundred percent believe that she has been visited by aliens. The the one thing that really got me was that um, in a Vice article, there was a Vice article where they visited a um a meeting, like a kind of support group for alien abductees, and Hillary Porter and her partner uh, Ken uh, Chancellor were there. Beans. Put some respect on that <laughs> yeah, name, the Chairman of Beams, Chairman and Co-Chairman of Beans. <laughs> and then they asked they asked her um like one of the questions they asked her was like, uh, what would you like to say? Or what message would you send to the aliens? And Hillary <laughs> replied with, "What? Just hi, really? I don't think they mean us any harm." And I was kind of like, "Are, are you serious? It's just contra- they put you through. It, it sounds like in most of your stuff, they put you through traumatic, super traumatic experiences. Like yeah. when you were five years old, yeah. they stripped you down and threw you onto a table and, and like, subjected you to a, a brutal examination. Yeah. Like that doesn't that left sound you with like, lifelong if, if scars." Anything, and skid marks. If anything, they might not mean us harm, but they definitely don't have concern for our well being. <laughs> like, no. It's weird because so, I read something where she said like they they have all evil intentions. 
Well, she flipped. Any good, right? She flipped. Well, yeah. yeah. Yo yo. So she flipped over. Then maybe you think, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's a, yeah. maybe it's not her anymore. Maybe she's got a lot yeah. of it. It's, it's definitely hard for me to oh take my God. seriously. Like I said, the lack aliens, of corroborating evidence is just the biggest thing. For the me. aliens no have infiltrated be beams. Like, that's not the real Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. Yeah. That's why we got the damage. Yeah. But I'm telling you, beams. <laughs> the bad shape shifter. Beams have be, has been infiltrated. It's been compromised. You heard it here. That's a Hillary suit. <laughs> that's what <right. laughs> <laughs> It's terrible. Uh, anyways, sorry. Every once in a while, we come, every once in a while we come across one that uh, it's a bad one. You got to you got to get into them because they're part of the the you know ufology, and you got to you got to look into them. But, uh, like I said, there's a hashtag. Look it up. There's a lot to them. This one, on this look one. it up. This one was fun to look in because it was like oh, lighthearted yeah. and you get a good laugh and stuff like well, that. But like, usually, I liked like what? I look forward to trying to like debate with you guys but like when you're like well, what do you think like i have nothing to say because this is so obviously fucking bullshit yeah <laughs> like there's yeah she's disproved it herself with all these ridiculous stories but what if maybe i don't know what if i it's so true. just her flipping open the the cabinet that you know i just imagine this like cabinet <laughs> like with a green glow on the yeah. inside yeah. with like the dry ice smoke coming out of it you're like, like boom alien fetuses you're like what, what? <laughs> Like, why would you keep those in a cabinet in a hallway? Why would you not, not say like, anything fr- about like that a refrigerator to room? Lo- not, not even locked, just like, just there. Just anyone could just open not it. A, yeah, <laughs> not even refrigerator or anything. We're just like, yep, we'll just leave them in here. Just put them in that. Not even, yeah, not locked. Anything. Just, yeah. yeah. Not guarded. Uh, They'll be standing there. Just fun. Fun one. Yeah, yeah it was look, fun. Look into it. Go ch- go check out the her all her, yeah. all her artwork. Or not her... Yeah, you can check out her free illustrate. You know, yeah. that is her free. Book. I think she's published two books. So she has the illustration one, which is free PDF on her website, and then she has the actual one, which is like, it's like a, it's like two bucks on on Amazon. How are we not talking about fucking uh, Christopher Walken and, and and Batman Returns? Max Shirk, the fucking Emma, Men in Black guy. Do you see her drawing? Looks exactly like him. Oh right, it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, it does look like legitimately yeah, yeah, exactly like it. Max it Shirk. Like <laughs> wow. Well, like you now. We gotta pull that. Too bad he doesn't after say hours. anything, Terry. Like yeah. he doesn't after talk hours, the whole right. time. Yeah. That yeah, it's, dude, it's, it's like, him. If he was, if she was like, he spoke in a really interesting cadence. <laughs> then we have, hmm, what do you say, un, uncool, unquizzical, unquizzical, unquizzical proof. proof. Oh, God damn it! He said like, well, you know, after everything. Yeah. Well, you know. Wow. All right. Um, Guess about one ninety. Let's uh, let's keep on rolling. Why don't we get into a little bit of. Random Tron. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> oh, stroking out again. Oh, brain's dying. Superior genetics. Yeah, yeah. Superior genetics over on this guy over here. Yeah. Mean genes. <laughs> That's good. Oh, shit. Space News! Gotcha! What is the news in space? Um, well, we're <laughs> well. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, we've tracked five mysterious fast radio bursts to the arms of distant spiral galaxies. Um, as we all know, um, we're starting to detect more and more uh, fast radio bursts. Um, and we're not sure what's behind them. Super short, super intense radio wave pulses, AM radio from distant galaxies. Who knows? Um, but we're starting to get better at, you know, finding them. So, um, before there was only around 15, um, of the thousands or so FRB detected to date have been traced back to particular galaxies. Um, but now we're starting to get them in clusters cause we're starting to think we're on the cusp of figuring out how these work and what's causing them. So kind of interesting. Goddamn Hubble telescope strikes again. And they think they're thinking that these new five they detected maybe maybe come from magnetars, which is a type of sun. It's a type of Pokemon, Pokemon, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Type of, isn't it like a type of like rapidly spinning star? Like Yeah, mag, what do they say? Magneton. It's Pokemon. Dense stars with incredibly yeah. powerful magnetic fields. Probably which tend to be found Pokemons. in FRB sites spotted by Hubble. So they're starting starting to track these back across the galaxies, trying to pinpoint. So uh, either a magnetar star or an alien planet with a Dyson Dyson sphere. One of the two. Yeah. Might have made the second part up, but 
We got any updates on Mice Tyson? Oh, that's cool. Uh, the, when they did the stuff in the space. Jacks. He's taking the asteroids. Asteroids? Yeah. He's on the asteroids getting fucking jacked. That's hilarious. Getting ready for his rematch with Holyfield. Suicycle asteroids. He bit off another mouse's ear and they had to put him in isolation. That's fair. Happens. Um, what else I have? Um, I didn't read this article. I just love the headline. It says, Mysterious patterns suggest exoplanets could actually be shrinking in space. Everyone knows that's from the mining. That's why yeah. Pluto's not a planet anymore. Pluto's not a fucking Whoa. planet. Relax over your scroopy noopers. <laughs> um, you obviously so, haven't been listening to fucking Jerry. Pluto is a planet. Earth's greatest scientist. Yeah. Um, I just, I literally read the headline. I thought of Rick and Morty. I was like, okay, well, that's kind of funny. Um, and then quickly I had, because we're all in person and I know you, everyone's been missing it. Mm, I but, hear it. I can fucking feel it. Got some Aurora updates for everyone. Hey, oh, <laughs> um, tonight, no Auroras, probably low chance this week of seeing Auroras. And by Friday, when you're listening to this, you already missed them. If there was some, <laughs> you, I'm surprised you didn't have any cue cards for that one. That's pretty good. Oh, I thought you're actually going to read this one about the giant massive eruption on the sun's surface. <laughs> oh, oh that's, no, that's pretty fucking badass. There was a huge eruption. Uh, How'd they get that picture? May 19th. The, the solar sp- the solar probe? It's not in Crayola. I don't Was it the, par- it the Parker solar probe? Parker solar probe? Uh, no, it's, we're the, on? it's the ATT solar probe. The ATT solar yeah. probe. <laughs> our name's on it. So it, it does say Parker solar probe, but it also says our name on it. So A spacecraft captured a massive eruption on the sun's surface for the first time, and that was a Parker solar probe. So the chance of auroras may be here. Ooh. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> probably, he probably got it right. Probably but it is well. cool. The Parker Space Probe is going to keep flying by the sun for a while and eventually, with our names on it, crash into the surface of the sun. And burn. And we'll be part of that burning ball Amazing. forever. Well, yeah. for until it, we instantly vaporize on the way in. Uh, one more piece of space news. China becomes the first ever country to successfully land a rover on Mars. On Did their, they fucking crash it? On their first <laughs> try. On their first try. The first country to do it on their first try. Everyone oh, really? else has failed on their first try. I don't... Okay. Yeah, but they're also rover. firing up death lotteries every time they go yeah, space. Yeah. So every time I they send like one of these up there, well, someone on Earth cool has to yeah. die. Uh, <laughs> but the Mars rover, China's Mars rover, Zhurong? Zhurong? Zhurong. Zhurong? Zhurong? Oh, yeah. Landed... Yeah. Landed about as recording this five days ago, and it's taken its first photos of Mars. It's pretty sweet. That is fucking. Cool. And now the NASA and the China robots will battle. Yeah. It is robot jocks. Have, it's happening. Have you? <laughs> it's the new bots. the new season of they, battle bots. You guys is don't here. know this, but the the NASA rover has a trans transforming function, yeah. and they will transform into bipedal robots and battle. Well, and it has oh a, well God. the Mars rover or the NASA rover has the fucking chopper on maybe it. That's, so maybe, two, oh, that's right. It's two v one actually. Yeah. Well, and also maybe that's why they sent Mice Tyson into space. He's the backup. It's the backup. He's the backup. He's gonna fucking crash line and whoop China's ass. Possibly. Anyways, the cool stuff going on on Mars. Multiple countries sending probes, rovers, orbiters. Just uh, just in time for Elon Musk to send the first bunch of hu- humans over to Mars to probably die and never come home. I love that <laughs> interview where he's like. Oh yeah, people are gonna die. <laughs> he's like, "Hey, you're explorers. You're probably yeah. gonna die. You're we, probably he, gonna die." You know what? He's not wrong. At least he's not. He's not sugarcoating it. He's like, "If you go, you're probably gonna die." Yeah, I was <laughs> like, "Cool, cool. Sign man. me up." Um, we got a theorite of the week, and we got a special mention. Um, should I do a special mention first? Yeah, do a special mention. Let's do it. I have to give a special mention uh, to Mister Zeitgeist. Oh, yeah. Um, Big time. Because he supplied the beers for our Dungeons and Dragons episode. Stoned Ogre. But we got too, too drunk at the Stoned Ogre Tavern <laughs> to uh, thank him while we were there. So uh, thank you, Mr. Zeitgeist. I mean, should we be thanking him, though? We were all so fucking yeah, hurt. It's, yeah, it's okay. your fucking fault, we're, Zeitgeist. We're, we appreciate it, but at the same time, oh my God, that yeah. hurt. We're that still kind of hurting. Um, fun. So yeah, I'm it was, kombuchas and it, was it was rough. But uh, Theorite of the Week uh, goes to... New I, Patreon supporter. New Patreon supporter, Sean Penny or Sean Finney. Uh, whatever. It's Sean Big Money Finney. Sean Big Money. Sh- he uh, donated the highest ever single donation we've ever received um, for Pod Week. Yeah. And uh, so thank you for that. He just loves the show, wanted to support the show, wanted to support Pod Week. Uh, thank you for that, Sean. Um, Guy's a fucking beauty. Yeah. You, you can't usually buy your way on to 
Fear out of the week. Oh, but every, guy, one, every once in a while. <laughs> every once in a while, there's someone we're like, okay, well, how do we not give it to this guy? Yeah, sometimes you got us. Absolute so. legend. Thank you very much. So thanks, Zeitgeist. Thanks, Big Money Sean. Thank you, Sean. You big, the big money. Um, <laughs> Absolute beauties. <laughs> That's what it'd be. Yeah, big money. Change, his, change your name on Discord when you joined Big Money Sean. Um, what else do we have here? Well, we're in the midst of pod week. Pod week is almost over, and I think it oh, might... Wait, what? right before that, as you're listening to this, Cosmic Channels is back on this feed. Alien Theorist Theorizing. That's right. Sundays, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Whoa, One, wait, wait. Not wait, all... What? We're going to do... The no, sec- this Sunday, May 30th. So if you're listening to this case file... Oh, yeah. May 30th, and then we're going to do... We're going to try and do the second and fourth Sundays of the month. Yeah. So if you if you've never listened to Cosmic Channels, it's just a straight call in show. You call, give your theories, your stories, make fun of Braden, whatever you want. One hour, it's your show. We sit here, we take the calls. Uh, but if you're if you've been listening on Cosmic Channels, it was a separate feed. It's going to be merged with ATT. So if uh, you can just that one will stay there forever. There's 30 episodes. If you so if you run out of ATT and you want to listen to Cosmic Channels, there's 30 there. But yeah, it's coming back. It's coming home, baby. Coming home, merging back with the main show. Just because uh, it's much easier for us to just have one feed. Yeah, <laughs> it's, right. it's a little too much work. <laughs> Trying to push them into two. So yeah, so I'm excited to bring that back. I'm going to make a bunch more music for it. It's going to be fun. All right, Mitsu Pod Week. This may be the most Patreon supporters I've had to read. Buckle up. On the show. <laughs> Uh, when you when you put out 20 extra hours of bonus content in a week, you attract some people. So this week's Patreon supporters, Ethan Cox. Big. <laughs> Chris, Christian Tellez. Super fake. KS underscore Sasquatch went up a tier. Ultra, real ultra fake. No, that's real. Mike Paladino. Colby Brackenridge. Josh Krantz. Full year pledge by... Ronan Schmidt, uh, Jackson S- Steer. Steer. Steer goes up to a $10 pledge. Timothy Reinke. I want in on this. What's the next one? Soylent Green is what I mean at $5 a month. Andrew. I, I can't even read. How, Heidi Howitzer. Heidi Howitzer. Nikayla Trujillo. Trejo. Trail. Trail. Yeah. Capitan Trail. J. <laughs> oh, we know that. Jessica Gomez up the pledge $10 Woo! a month. Why don't you say Jomez? Joe Jomez. Jomez. Lisa H. Saturnalian. That's a fucking dope name. Cheyenne Colon. Paul Nugent Brant. Hopkins. Who wants this one? John, John Avila. Avila. Jesse Hola. You don't have to get louder for this. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get closer to your mic. Joshua Negrin. From 666 per month to $10 pledge by number of the Joe. Here's our man Sean with the $10 month pledge. Big money. Plus the big. Big money Sean. Big money Sean. Adam goes up the top to your pledge. Woo! Make sure to message us and let us know what we can, how we can help you. Yeah. Rachel, uh, Haynes, 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 Tyler. <laughs> Who wants this one? Holly Holly McBain. McBain. I am Ooh. Legend 1994, and we actually got three it, more as we were recording. Gato Padre, Sawyer Das, Matthew Andro, Andro Lowitz. And you know who? 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 Oh, you snuck in a couple extra ones. That was, that was longer than the whole theme, yeah, the whole Zeltron theme song. And as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. See you in after hour. Oh.